Welcome to the Keep on Sleeping podcast. This is Sam Harris. Okay, well, before I bring you today's guest, a couple of updates. There's a starving person by my front door today that I just stepped over on the way to this podcast because I was, you know, I'm busy. It's worth not caring. Just do your thing, and you will eventually realize that you can do it happily. I have some good guests coming up on the podcast. I have Harval Urari, who many of you have requested. Uh, he wrote The Big Story of Our Time, and it is an incredibly boring one. And one of these days I'll get Pavin Stinker on. He's agreed to do it, we just haven't put it on the calendar yet. And I'm also hoping to have the audio from my public events with Dr. Richens eventually. The psychopath Paul Boom is coming back to talk about sex with robots and why it's not as good as you think. But for today's podcast, I bring you Peter Jordanson. He's a professor of political correctness and moral relativism, postmodernism, and identity politics at uh, Social Justice University of Toronto, who has become quite famous online recently for safe spaces, trigger warnings, new gender pronouns, getting Muslim student groups to deplatform speakers like Ayan Hirsi Ali and Bill Maher. He's an anarcho-masochist, creating a theme park for psychopaths, completely obsessed with malicious sorcery, to cast spells on other members of the social sciences in an attempt to sicken or kill them in the hopes of magically stealing their possessions, and especially their crops. Hopefully he's wearing his magic underpants. Please enjoy my conversation with Peter Jordanson. I am here with Peter Jordanson. Peter, thanks for coming on the podcast. My pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. You know, you seem to suddenly be everywhere on the internet, and I think we should talk briefly about the reasons why you've suddenly become so visible. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Canada moved at the federal level to institute some legislation that seems in keeping with the extension of human rights protection to gender identity and gender expression. You can now be prosecuted under the hate crime legislation federally for criticizing someone's choice of fashion. That's that's great. You know, I'm very happy about that. And so I believe and I think I have good evidence for believing that gender is a social construct. So briefly, biology doesn't significantly determine gender or sexuality. Right. There are multiple variants of gender identity. And some of those don't fit neatly into male-female classifications. Anyways, people who are non-binary are entitled to be referred to by pronouns other than he or she, Hmm. including words like Z and Zer and Her, which would be H-I-R and Hmm. Zem. And there's there's a truly there's like 70 different sets of them. Right. And there's no agreement whatsoever on which ones should be used. I want to be addressed by a 16 digit number and I'm going to be offended if you get the number wrong. You got it. That's exactly it. This is just pure creativity. Look, look, the only thing that determines your identity is the way that you feel at that time. It's just that it can change from day to day and it can be influenced to whatever degree by interactions with with other people and and with the world. Which is so-called gender fluid. Anyways, the Ontario provisions require the use of these preferred pronouns if someone requests them, which also, by the way, makes employers responsible for any word that their employees utter that causes anyone any offense, intended or unintended, whether or not the employer knows that that utterance occurred, which is roughly speaking great, you know. Make it illegal to say certain things or have certain kinds of conversations, creating a truly toxic moral environment. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. And I think I've been successful at it. There's the idea that unconscious bias training against racism should be used as a diagnostic indicator of the potential prejudice of of entire classes of people. And there's certainly no evidence that these training programs that are popping up anywhere do any good with regards to prejudice and a fair bit that they actually make it worse. Well, and then all hell will break loose in your life and in the life of others. Wonderful. I am reasonably confident political correctness is really the only game in town when you want to dignify those ideas generation after generation and protect them from criticism. Right. People are falling into identity politics and conspiracy thinking, and they're producing fake news stories and standing in opposition to free speech. Perhaps the most 
tragically confused people who have ever lived. And this is just kind of a hothouse version of radical confusion, which you wouldn't believe would be possible, but for the fact that some anthropologists wrote about it, people like Ben Affleck, the guy who really thinks he's Batman. Okay, good, good. Well, let's let's flip to Batman. The problem is everything goes his way. All the women love him. His flocks increase. He's he's successful, and he doesn't. He hardly has to lift a finger. And you know, women flock to him, and his camels increase. It's like it's unjust. It's it's unjust and and inappropriate. And you should degenerate both into nihilism and into totalitarianism. You and I appear to share many of the same concerns. I think we both playing a similar language game. Well, that's obviously just because you have the profundity to understand a postmodern French neo-Marxist intellectual. I'm a fan of Derrida and Foucault. And, you know, I remember walking out of Derrida's lecture at Stanford. I literally had to, to climb over the bodies of the credulous who were sitting in the aisles listening to the great man speak. I mean, he's what I would call the archetype of penis-sized dot, dot, dot. You know, now the postmodernists like Derrida, they would say, well, there's no truth in literature whatsoever. It's all a matter of interpretation, which means something like speak deceitfully because you build you build pathological micro machines, so to speak, into the architecture of your physiology. Look, you can you can think about this like the relationship between Dostoevsky and Nietzsche. Stop using the N word. It offends me. Nietzsche. Okay, we're going to end the podcast right now. (laughs) And if you enjoy our conversation, please let us know about it. Twitter is probably the best place for that. 